Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about naming oxy acids. Remember, an acid is anything that releases hydrogen ions into solution. And oxy acids are things with hydrogen and also oxygen. Usually this oxygen is in a polyatomic ion. Like in this case, we can see that we have HNO3, and that polyatomic ion is nitrate, and it has the oxygen in it. So it's really important, actually, that you know your polyatomic ions to be able to go through these naming rules. What we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth between writing the name and the formula. So in the first part of the video, we're going to start with the formula and write the name for these oxy acids. And in the second part of the video, we're going to start with the name, like nitric acid, and go back to the formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we could name nitric acid and then compare that to this other acid, HNO2. So how do we name oxy acids? The very first thing we need to do is identify the polyatomic ion we have. And here we see that we have HNO3, and NO3 is the polyatomic ion nitrate. So the first thing that you might want to do is just write down the name of the polyatomic ion. Now what we do is we change the ending of our polyatomic ion name. And the rules depend a little on what your ending is. So for example, if you have ite, if your polyatomic ion ends in ite, you change it to O-U-S. If your polyatomic ion ends in ate, you change it to I-C. And that's basically the way we name these oxy acids. We just write the name of the polyatomic ion, change the ending, and add acid. So in this case, we can see that our nitrate ends in ate, which means we're going to change that ate to ic. So what we do is we get rid of this ate part, and instead, we write nitric. And then all we do is we add acid. So that's it. That's the naming rules. This is actually the easier direction, going from the formula to the name. We'll go in the other direction in a little bit, and I'll show you why there's one more step there. All right, but how does that compare to HNO2? What name do we get there? Well, NO2 turns out to be nitrite. So first I'm just going to write the name of the polyatomic ion, which is nitrite. Right? And the reason I'm writing that is because that's what NO2 is. If I look at a list of my polyatomic ions, I'll see that NO2 is nitrite. And now if I go to my list of rules, I see that whenever I have a polyatomic ion ending in ite, I change it to OUS. So I get rid of this ite here, and I change it to an OUS. So I still have NITR, and now it ends with OUS. And the way we say that is nitrous. So this becomes nitrous acid. So you can see that if I have a polyatomic ion that ends in ate, like nitrate, it becomes nitric. On the other hand, if I have something that ends in ite, like nitrite, it becomes nitrous. So it's important to know your polyatomic ions pretty well and know whether they end in ate or ite, because that actually tells you how to name your acid. Let's do a few more examples. This question asks us, what's the name of HClO4? And again, the first step here is just going to be to identify your polyatomic ion. And so if we look at this compound, ClO4 is our polyatomic ion. That turns out to be perchlorate. So we have perchlorate. And if we take a look at our rules, it says whenever we see 8, we should change it to ic. And so that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase 8, and then I'm going to put ic. So that gives us perchloric. And the last step there is just to name it an acid. So to add acid there on the end. So that becomes perchloric acid. So that's basically the way we do this. We identify the polyatomic ion, we change the ending, and we add the word acid. Let's take a look at going the other direction. Now we're going to start with a name and we're going to go to a formula. How do we do that? Well, doing this process backwards basically just means we should identify what our polyatomic ion is. In this case, we can see that our polyatomic ion uh, has been turned into the word acetic. And so if I want to know what that was, what I need to do is drop the ic and put back on the appropriate ending. And you can see from our rules down here that if I have ic, I should go back to 8. So I'm going to get rid of ic, and I'm going to instead write 8. So that becomes acetate. Now, here's where you need to know your polyatomic ions once again. I need to know that acetate turns out to be C2H3O2. And it has a charge of negative 1. That charge is important. We want to pair that with a hydrogen. We want to pair that with hydrogen. And we know that hydrogens are positive 1. 
Hydrogen ions always have a charge of plus one. And those charges are important because when we write down the formula for our acid, we wanna make sure they're balanced. And so since hydrogen is plus one and acetate's minus one, it's already balanced. So in this case, we don't have to change the number of acetate ions or the number of hydrogen ions to make the charge balance. It's just like writing an ionic compound at this point where we're trying to balance the charge. And so we get HC2H3O2. And here it's kind of uh, the standard rule is to just keep these hydrogens separate. So because that first hydrogen is able to separate from the acetate ion and form the acid, we leave it separate. So we write this as HC2H3O2. That's acetic acid. Let's do another example. So here we have carbonic acid, and we want to know the formula for that. So we're going to do the same thing. Where we see ick, we're going to change the ending. So ick is going to become eight. So what we have is not carbonic, but carbonate. Again, important now to know what your polyatomic ions are. And carbonate is CO3, two minus. That two minus is important. That means now we're going to actually have to change the number of hydrogens to make these charges balance because we have a hydrogen with a charge of plus one. So to make them balance, we can do a couple of things. We can just think about the fact that I need two positive charges to cancel out my two negative charges, which implies that I need two hydrogens. We can also do what we did with our ionic compounds where we cross over. And since we have plus one over here and plus two over there, when we cross these over, we're gonna see that we need two hydrogens and one carbonate. So you can cross over there to balance the charges or you can just think through the process of balancing the charges and either one is fine. If you're not sure how to balance those charges, I recommend watching my video on naming ionic compounds. It's a very similar process. So we have H2CO3. That is carbonic acid. So these are the basic rules for naming oxy acids. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Also subscribe to receive updates about future videos.